All right, so I'm gonna explain why there is no such thing as enlightenment. At least not in a figurative sense. Literally, enlightenment means to be brought to light, to see the light, you know. I've been enlightened. Um, but our perception of enlightenment um, is we see some kind of, you know, Buddhist monk meditating cross-legged and, you know, at one with himself in the universe and calm and peace and yada, 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 yada. Um, and I'm going to pick up upon, there's the, um, a philosopher known as Sadhguru who's um, Indian and he has a he's very wise um, he has a very good video um, which he, he basically says you know enlightenment is you know for you to finally open your eyes and see what is right in front of you um, and essentially um, shed the uh, the beliefs that we have enshrined. Um, basically, like the opposite of enlightenment would be um, ignorance. So, to be enlightened means basically what? To be not ignorant. That's kind of where, where what his train of thought is, you know. And but I'm going to pick up on that, you know, as a um, psychologist uh, standpoint psych psych psychological standpoint and what I know about the brain and which is that um, we we tend to value ourselves in, in terms of accomplishments and achievements and our brain kind of gives us a, a dopamine boost it releases a chemicals in our brain that make us go, yay, I did it, yay, I got that Jeopardy answer correct, yay, I, I, I succeeded, success, 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 is kind of uh, built into our, we look at that as, you know, it, 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 it stems from survival and, and being, um, we, re, we equate that to, we're going to survive longer, ha ha, but we, 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 we trivialize it into everyday little things. You know, such as when people are like, ha, I'm right, you're wrong, and they get into these weird debates. But essentially, when someone becomes or experiences an enlightenment, at that moment they feel like, ah, I have learned something that has been secretive, you know, or I've learned the, the, the holy knowledge or the, you know, the the sacred, you know, information, and therefore I know everything. Um, and let me give you a history of this. Virtually every teenager at some point will experience a distrust for the belief system and information which has been handed down to them from previous generations. And this comes as they are enlightened, they feel a sense of enlightenment to learn that, hey, you know what? Bubble gum doesn't stay in your stomach for seven years, it's there for two or three days. Or that milk doesn't do a body good. So they, in this, and then it, the more they learn, the more contempt they have for the, 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 their parents, their scholars, and the, the generations before them. And this manifests into what we know as rebellion or teenage rebellion. They'll often conflate, you know, a handful, a dozen or so, you know, old wives tales that they've been told with um they're wrong about everything 
they're wrong about that stupid thing. What do they know? You don't know anything. You're a teacher. You're teaching. If you really knew anything, you'd be a you know you'd be a scientist out there. You know these kind of things. And um, it's it becomes contempt because they are told on one hand that it's immoral to lie, and then on the other hand. They have been lied to their whole life. Even the best parents out there, you know, they, you know, will pass down information that they, they don't knowingly um, know as a, a fallacy. Um, but most parents, but even the best of them will still, you know, tell their kids babies are delivered by storks. And, you know, there's a fairy that comes under your pillow and, you know, gives you money for your tooth. Um, so these things become the, the, the basis for why teenagers are rebellious. And, you know, parents are always like, kids, you, you all think you know everything. Why do kids think they know everything? Well, there's a pretty damn good reason why. why. And it's because you have indoctrinated them with fake news, with, with bullshit that they're becoming aware of and they're, they think they're enlightened. They're like, yeah, I know everything, you know? Even though 90% of the information that you've given them is probably going to be helpful, you've still told them, you know, bullshit, you know, to a, to a, to a, to a degree which is just astronomical, you know? Masturbating will make your palms grow hair and, you know, just all this dumb stuff. And the, the indoctrination of our children just starts at a really early age. And what's funny though is that even though that these kids will ultimately, at some point we hope that they will come around and say, you know what? Our parents had outdated information, they had the best information at the time, and right now I probably have some outdated information that my kids or the next generation will debunk. You know, so I can't, you know, necessarily hold them against that. But we fail to realize how primitive we are uh, because we're so driven by that reward to, I have found the light, I've seen the light, I am, uh, I have succeeded and, you know, I know better than you, I have pwned you. <laughs> Owned, bitch, you know. So we're so driven by that, that, that we enshrine our thoughts and beliefs to a point where we don't want to accept anything after we have, once we have learned that this way was wrong, and then we learned that this way is correct, and then five, 10 years, 20 years down the line, we learn, oh shit, that way is also correct. We're like, man, I already went through this once. Uh, no, 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 what I learned is fine. Like people get, uh, they get, it's uncomfortable to change their lifestyle. And this is especially true with, you know, finding out, oh, milk does a, doesn't do a body good, it's bad for you. Okay, well, just fine. Oh, steak is bad for you? Okay, great, I'll just eat fish and chicken and stuff. And then you come, come 10, 20 years down, down the line, you, 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 you learn that, you know, chicken and, and fish is also bad for you, but you're already like, ah, man, like, you know, I don't want to do all that, you know, I, don't, I have to eat tofu, and how am I going to eat my protein, man? How am I going to eat my protein? So we tend to stay in ignorance and pretty much deny that in which we can see with our own eyes. and enshrine our, our thoughts and and so we're not as smart as we think we are because we know just a little bit more than the last generation who knows just a little bit more than the last generation who knows just a little bit more than the last generation we are still very much so indoctrinated and I would say women get a much substantial blow to it at a very young age than, than men do. Women are, are indoctrinated to believe that they're not allowed to experience se sexual pleasure or they're a slut or they're a tramp or they're a whore, you know, whereas men, it's like, 
right on, son. Go get him, tiger. So we, 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 we elevate the stock of men for having, the, based on the more, you know, sexual experiences and partners they have. And then we decrease the value of women based upon them, based upon the, 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 the same thing, but more, the more partners that they have. And it's, there's no sense in it. There's no, it's, 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 it's that's, that's sexist. And, and it's, it, it's, it blows me away when a woman will shame another woman and be like, oh man, she slept at the whole dorm. What a skank, she a slut. Like that is toxic. That's the toxic masculinity shit you talk about. That's, that's misogyny right there. Um, but it, it goes deeper than that. We, we, we tell our girls, you know, we indoctrinate them to believe that they have an expiration date and that at some point they will cease to be attractive and lose all value. And if you ever wondered why women are so obsessed about marriage, it's because they feel like, okay, well, I need to lock this in in order for, because he's gonna become unattractive, uh, unattractive to me at some point and start pursuing younger girls. and. There is some truth in that, but there's a lot of truth against that. For instance, uh, when, when men sexually like develop, they tend to lock in um, an idea of, of what is attractive and sexy. You know, you know, for me, it was, you know, Pamela Anderson, you know, when I was 12 years old, and many of you, it's probably Kate Moss or, or Kate Upton or whatever. So, and this is at 12 years old. And then once you become, you know, 23 or 24 and you're like Ooh, i'm at that age i can get that pamela anderson of course you can't um you can't get that kate moss either but then you grow up and you go 40 50 60 70 you're still attracted to that ideal of what you've you know anointed as beauty you have been indoctrinated to think so yeah the, the men will always be attracted to that set whatever you know idealistic is regardless of you know age but they also have an infinite amount uh, of different you know um, fetishes and, and things that they that, that they are constantly evolving and, and, and morphing into you know such as long nails and you know big butts and breasts and and certain hairstyles and and you know eyes and you know crooked teeth and skin color and you know they're, they're, and we know this because we studied old people and you know and they've asked you know the old people you know what keeps the fire in the marriage and the the, the wife is always like well he did this and this and then ooh, we probably shouldn't talk about that but then when you ask the guy he's always like man that accent of hers man has been good you know, got me going since 1963. So they, they, they tend to fixate on, uh, men tend to fixate on things and, and, and develop new things too that they like with their partners rather than just saying, I'm done with this. I want, you know, I want me a, a Pamela Anderson now, or, you know, Kate Moss or whatever that's, that's half the age. They're still gonna be attracted to it, you know, but I, I know, any man with, it, with, with, with any sense isn't just gonna abandon a partner of life um at least not for any grounds that you know you know if, if things are boring and dull and it's you know you know you're both kind of like not really happy then it's a different story but the point is though we indoctrinate these children and they think that they're so enlightened i've learned so much because my parents lied to me and told me all this mumbo jumbo <laughs> about how I can't drive with the, the dome light on in the car and we found out that that's illegal they've been lying to us and we tend to uh, they tend to conflate that with enlightenment and here's the problem with enlightenment the enlightenment um, and, and there's two problems one problem is they're not that much smarter or that much more enlightened than the previous generation or the information that they've been given. They've basically just said, they've just woken up and said, wow, I have been stupid my whole life. And nine times out of 10, they're gonna blame it on something. I've been lied to, you know, I had a bad education. I couldn't afford it, you know, whatever. You know, 
It's not gonna ever be like, thankfully, thank you that I've learned this finally. They're gonna feel ripped off, you know, and directed towards their parents and their bosses and their elders and their, their teachers and this and that. And, but enlightenment in the sense of like those Buddhist monks that we see on TV, let me tell you this. That is not enlightenment. Enlightenment means to be brought to light on something, to be let out of the ignorance. And when you are let out of the ignorance on things, and you, the more knowledge you have, the more depressed you're going to be. Guarantee you that. The more frustrated, the more depressed, the more, the more just kind of, you know, if you, if you reach a certain level of intelligence and wisdom, that you can't even relate to your fellow human being, you know. I remember some guy came out of a strip club one time on Bourbon Street. He was like, "Whoa, I had a fast time," and I'm like, "Okay." And he's like, "Man, that girl was like 200 pounds, and you know, but there's no such thing as bad pussy. That's what they say, right?" And I was like, "That's what they say." There you go. <laughs> it's it's just weird to not be able to relate to people on, on things that, you know, you're just like... It took me forever to get into football, and I still feel like a barbarian, like a gladiator, like, woo you know, but... <laughs> Fuck this city, because they're, their sports team, like, beat ours, you know? But, um, yeah, that's all fun and, and games and stuff, you know? But we still like to live in ig ignorance and, and think that we're enlightened. And, but, but true enlightenment, enlightenment um, or in a literal sense, means to be brought to light on things. And the more things you be brought to light on, the more things that you're going to be upset and depressed and frustrated about. And if you're not, you're a psychopath. You, I'm like a, like a genuine, bona fide psychopath. Because if you are to be at peace with the world and the state of affairs that we're in and to be one with myself and the universe and is to be complacent and and accepting of the atrocities and that 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 we humans are causing on ourselves and animals and other beings and and just the weird and the the the, the crazy, you know, doggy dog world, you know, like climb, you know, step on someone's back to get, you know, to the next level. And, you know, that's to, to be enlightened and like, like one of those Buddhist monks that you see on TV is, is essentially to be a psychopath, to be complacent with the, the atrocities that we as humans are are, are committing. So, if you're enlightened and you know all these things, I know everything, I'm wise, and I'm at peace with myself and one with the universe. And so you're one with, you know, um, child sex trafficking and, you know, invading countries and, and, and genocide and, 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 you know, every other thing. I don't, I don't need to sit here and list all the bullshit, but I mean, that's, that's why there's no such thing as enlightenment, at least not in in a figurative sense in a literal sense that you know we experience enlightenment that dopamine rush whenever um every time we you know learn something that brings us out of our ignorance we've been in the dark Ooh, now we're in the light ah i know everything now and that's the problem because we're, we're, we're born in a tiny little box that we break out of you know in the teenage years you know and then and then uh, we think we know everything and whatnot. And then, you know, we go into college and, and, and whatnot or into the workforce or to the army or whatever. And then we realize we're in another box. It's just a bigger box. It's much bigger that, that, that we couldn't even see it clearly. We could still see it. We can see there's a box. We all do it. But then once we get past the, the you know, the college or the, 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 um, the, the military service or the, um, you know, the, that, 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 
the workforce, that first job and what whatnot, whatever, and get better, you know, improve our, um, you know, our life. Well, guess what? We're in a much, much bigger box, but the problem is we can't see it. It's so big. It's a mile down. The end of the box is a mile or two down, so you can't really see it. And the top of it is up there. And, and if we're lucky to break out of that box, we'll find that we're in another box and another box and another box and another box. And so the enlighten, the, 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 the enlightenment process keeps repeating itself because the, that, that, that rush of gaining new knowledge or shedding the fallacies that have been enshrined in you and indoctrinated in you, that rush of dopamine only lasts for so long till we're like, oh, yeah, it's common information. You might go repeat it and get get to, you know, you might be with your friends and be like, well, guess what? I can tell you some Shakespeare stuff and let me tell you something else that I learned about, you know, whatever. So then we start seeking the next, you know, stage of enlightenment until our brains become lazy and we get complacent with what we know. And because learning new things means we have to change our lifestyle to to accept not just to learn but to accept what's right in front of our face often means that we have to change our lifestyle I, I, I it's happened to me so many times and right now I'm at a place that almost feels like an enlightenment and the red flags are going off I'm like oh don't believe it don't believe it don't believe it don't believe it there's another box out there that you got to break out don't get complacent in this and don't settle, you know, for this. Constantly question this, constantly question the new information that, that you've learned and try to get more. Um, that's, I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life because I'm passionate about that kind of thing, about psychology and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, enlightenment's bullshit and you don't want it unless you wanna be really sad and depressed and angry and frustrated. And if you do reach it, then it's a good chance that you're a psychopath. Because if you're complacent, you know, and, and you're at peace with, you know, you know, the, the, the horrible, inhumane things that we do to animals, and you can turn a blind eye to, you know, factory farming, and you're complacent with, you know, indoctrinating, like, our children. I, you know, I, think, it's psycho, I think it's psychotic to have children. And there's so many kids out there, you know, that need adoption. And, the, and that, I think it's egotistical. It's like, oh, I want to create a little mini me to, to carry on my legacy of shit. Ha ha. Because I'm so great. I just want to make a little mini me. <laughs> it's me. Look, that's my eyes. Ha ha. So I think it's egotistical, you know, to, you know, purposely have children. Um, I find that the best parents are the ones who accidentally have children. <laughs> They're like, oh shit, we didn't mean for that to happen. Now we have a responsibility. Whereas those egotistic parents, uh, ego maniac parents who want to create little mini me's tend to you know indoctrinate their kids and say you know you're gonna grow up and be a quarterback or you're gonna grow up and be a rocket man or whatever you know they, they tend to like try to get them to follow their path and, and not treat them as individuals but as a product that they own of themselves an extension of themselves like you know and they, they tend to disrespect their kids and I'm, that'll be a, a topic for another day um, but, you know, enlightenment is, is to be enlightened is, is psychotic, you know, so that's all I have to say on this, this front here. And go watch that, uh, some videos of, of that guy, uh, Sakuru. So he's a, it's S-A-D-G-U-R-U. -U. He's very, he's very, he's old, but he's... He's there, man. He's there. He's very, very wise. Some of the stuff is like, you know, kind of like that stuff that, you know. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna criticize. I'm not gonna criticize him. He's 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 sound. He's a sound guy. Um, but yeah, I'm just building upon, you know, what he said. You know, going into the um, the um, the neuroscience aspect of why we feel enlightenment and that, that, that euphoria that we get from, you know, answering Jeopardy questions and, you know, oh. so, 
and we're not really much smarter than the last generation and so don't don't get complacent you know there's a lot more to learn if society can shed those those our, our beliefs that you know that you know as a human being our value is to to, to work and just work our work 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 while you know, giving that money away and get, getting it stolen from giant multinational corporations and and the banking industry and you know it's just, we're being defrauded all the time. So I'm not saying that people shouldn't work, but I mean, I, I think it was either 100 or 200 years ago people used to work three hours a day. Yeah, and we couldn't have made a lot of the discoveries that we made in the so-called enlightenment age uh that led to the industrial area er, area industrial era um if we didn't have that free time so and also that freedom of um of press so um and that's where britain really got it better than um pretty much anyone else at that time uh because they didn't persecute scientists whereas you know other countries would you know like especially like rome uh italy uh, they, they would you know the roman empire did not really like science too much they're like no you're saying the planets go what way no 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 we no we go around there no wait no come on man gravity that's like this is witchcraft so that's that's a whole different story though for another time so is the parent thing but just just say stay stupid if you can and and try not to bash those people who are stupid and just let them live you know in their stupidity and i never understand why people bash people for being stupid you know oh stupid you're a dumbass just let them be stupid man just be like <laughs> maybe chuckle if it's really funny just let them be stupid man like I would rather be, I'd rather have a hundred friends who are completely dumb boneheads that were nice people, caring people, compassionate people who didn't know anything about science or tech or medicine or anything or academics who weren't brainiacs. I'd rather have those people as my friends rather than these know-it-alls who feel that their degree has made them, given them some kind of moral superior superiority over the other people who don't. And that's that's another thing, that's another topic for another day, the, the bashing of stupid people and the, oh, I've got a degree, so I'm better than you. Like, oh, that's, that's all that stuff that's enshrined and, and it, it's indoctrinated in you since you're a little kid, you know? And it's stupid, you know? So you don't know that much that, more than you think that you know. You're not that enlightened. Nobody is. I'm not gonna say nobody is, but you don't want enlightenment, so. That's it, I'm done, I stop. I yield my time.